Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and today I'm excited to share with you my top 10 tips for making the most of a small closet and my five step process for doing bi seasonal wardrobe resets. I'm here in my bedroom in my husband and my first home. We are lucky that we don't just have a single closet in this bedroom, we actually have two. So my husband and I are each able to have our own. But even though we can each have our own closets, they're still pretty small. So let me introduce you to my tiny closet. As you can see, my closet is just a regular reach-in closet. It's not even particularly wide. And when we moved into this house, all of the rooms had that really standard closets with one clothing rail at around eye height. Some of them had that shelf above the rail and some of them didn't, but that was the extent of the closet organizational built-in situation. And I don't know about you, but I don't think a single clothing rail and a single shelf is the best way to utilize a closet's space. So that brings me to tip one of this video, which is to utilize as much of your closet's space as possible, especially the vertical space. What I really wanted to do was create a built-in system that used as much of the available space as possible in the way that is best suited to my particular wardrobe. And then the same thing for my husband's closet for his wardrobe. Once you have a bit of an idea of what your wardrobe looks like and what you need your closet to accommodate, it's time to figure out what kind of system is going to work for you. And I personally decided to go with Ikea. They are are one of the most affordable options for custom closets. And I even took it one step further by choosing their absolute cheapest custom closet system, the Waxel. As you can see, it's a really basic system. You start with mounting some brackets to the wall, vertical brackets and horizontal brackets along the top. And then you can buy different components that can attach onto these brackets on the wall in different configurations. I played around with the planner quite a bit to figure out the way that I could get the most storage out of my available space. And we decided to install it basically as high as we possibly could in the closet to really use the entirety of that vertical space. Now you might not be able to mount your closet system quite so high if you aren't as tall as I am. I am almost six feet tall so reaching up close to the ceiling to grab those hangers is no problem for me but if you're shorter than me and you don't want to have to use a step stool or ask your partner or a friend to grab things for you out of the closet I would recommend making sure that anything you're going to be grabbing on a regular basis is within easy reaching height. And if that means that you have a lot of extra vertical space above, say, your clothing rails, I would highly recommend doing shelves and baskets for items that you don't reach for as often so that you can still use all of that vertical space, even if you're not using it every single day. If you can't make any permanent changes to your closet, maybe you're renting or you just don't have the budget right now, I would highly recommend using that top shelf and also inserting some sort of small dresser or maybe a really cheap storage unit like the Calex from Ikea that you can put baskets in or just use as shelves at the bottom of your closet underneath any shorter hanging items so that again you can really use that full vertical space. Because we mounted the closet so high we actually ended up with an extra foot or so at the bottom underneath the bottom baskets. And I love these fabric baskets that I found for a really affordable price online. I'll link them down below along with anything that I mentioned that can be linked for you. If you're looking for something, it should be down there. I love how lightweight they are. And I also love that because they have fabric bottoms, I don't have to worry about them scratching our brand new hardwood floors that we spent a lot of blood, sweat and tears and money installing throughout our house. And I can fit five of them along the bottom of my closet, giving me even more storage Space down there. I've literally used every square inch of space in my closet from the very top almost to the ceiling to the very bottom on the floor and the entire width so that I can really get the most out of my teeny tiny closet. Moving on to tip number two, store your shoes, jewelry, and accessories elsewhere. If you have a teeny closet like I do, your best bet is going to be finding other places to put your accessories and shoes so they don't have to live in your teeny tiny closet with all of your clothes. I personally keep all of my shoes down by the entryway to our house and I just swap them out seasonally so that the shoes that are available are the ones that I'm most likely to wear. Things like belts and purses I typically store either in a drawer of my dresser or in a bin under the bed. When it comes to jewelry, I am such a big advocate of display displaying your jewelry as decor. I bought this really beautiful wicker box with a glass top to store all my necklaces and earrings and separate them out nicely so it's easy to see what I have and find what I want. And I also bought this really beautiful organic wooden dish to hold all my rings. Speaking of beautiful jewelry, this video is sponsored by my favorite jewelry company, Ana Luisa. 
I've been wearing and loving Ana Luisa's jewelry for years now, and they are my daily wear pieces. You'll always find me with all three of my piercings adorned with dainty Ana Luisa earrings, an Ana Luisa necklace, and sometimes even, if I'm feeling fancy, some Ana Luisa rings. Ana Luisa is an affordable brand of beautiful jewelry with a focus on sustainability. Their long-lasting and tarnish-free pieces are the perfect treat for yourself or a loved one, and they're kind to the planet too. Ana Luisa's niche really is dainty, tiny timeless jewelry at a price you'll love. Since Mother's Day is coming up, I wanted to talk a little bit about how my mom really inspired my love for jewelry. My mom was a working mom through my entire childhood, and she was always dressing very professionally, practically getting her stuff done, but she always, without fail, had the most beautiful jewelry, even if it was just a pair of diamond earrings. I absolutely loved going through her jewelry box as a kid and looking at all the beautiful pieces and imagining how beautiful my own jewelry collection would be as an adult. And now that I am an adult and I get to express myself however I like with my jewelry and got a couple extra piercings so I can express myself just that little bit more, I love not only playing with my jewelry and picking out pieces that reflect my personality and fit my vibe, but always coming back to that core tenant of focusing on timeless classic pieces, which is something I learned from my mom. Wanted to show you my newest pieces from Ana Luisa. I got two new pairs of earrings and a necklace. I love these little snake earrings. They are so adorable. I love that from a little further away, you can't really see what they are. There's just a touch of a dangly sparkle, but when you get close up, they're a little more fun and unexpected. I love these huggies. They're so timeless, so classic. They would fit so perfectly in into many different types of curated ears with different styles of jewelry. And I decided to feature these tiny little dagger earrings again that I got a couple months ago. These are so much fun. As for this necklace, I absolutely love it. It's so simple and stunning. Just this dark, black pendant with the gold. It has a little bit of a Victorian dark academia feel to it, which of course I love, but it's still so tiny and dainty and pretty. 100% of Ana Luisa's pieces have been strength and humidity tested and are covered by their two-year warranty. I've literally worn Ana Luisa pieces every single day for months on end without noticing any wear at all. And I'm bad and I usually wear my earrings in the shower. Anna Luisa's pieces are super affordable, starting at just $39, and they offer free, fast U.S. shipping and affordable shipping worldwide. My favorite thing about Anna Luisa as a brand, other than how beautiful their jewelry pieces are, is that they are so conscious of the environment. The brand is carbon neutral and climate neutral certified, offsetting 100% of their carbon footprint. Elevate your everyday with pieces you'll love at prices you'll love even more with Anna Luisa using the link in my description box and use my code ElizabethT20 for 20% off. Thank you so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the closet tips. Tip number three is to utilize baskets and drawers. Now you might be the outlier, the one person out there who only owns clothes that have to be hung up. In which case, you do you stick to only clothing rails and no baskets or drawers. But I think a lot of us have quite a bit in our wardrobe that just makes more sense being folded than it does being hung up. And you don't have to just have drawers in a dresser. You can incorporate drawers into your closet as well to, again, utilize as much of that space as possible. I personally love to fold more casual clothing, loungewear, pajamas, workout clothes. I also love to fold any tops that aren't made of fabric that will easily wrinkle. Tip number four store your folded items vertically. This is a tip I learned along with the rest of the world from Marie Kondo, but I always fold my clothes in a very particular way so I can store them vertically in a row in my drawer. This makes use of the maximum amount of space and it also makes it way easier to see what you have when you can look in a drawer and see the edge of each piece of clothing that's in there instead of having to lift things out to see what's piled underneath. Tip number five, which is to use matching hangers. I feel like this is such a basic tip, but it really makes such a huge difference. It isn't till very recently that I switched over to all matching wooden hangers and I absolutely love it. There's something so calming about opening my closet and every single hanger is identical. <laughs> I personally love a wooden hanger so that's what I decided to go with but I know some people really prefer velvet hangers since they have a bit more grip for your clothes. I don't have nearly as many items that are silkier and more likely to slide off a hanger and the hangers I have have that little bit of a notch which helps to catch the edge of a piece of clothing 
if it does start to slide off. Ashing hangers look great in any closet, but I feel like in a smaller closet, their impact is even more intense. Tip number six, like with like. This one takes a little bit of playing around. You might need to try a couple different things till you find a system that works best for you. But the best way to organize any closet, in my opinion, is to keep like items together. Figure out what works for your brain, what categories make most sense to you, and stick to them. For me, that means I use two main categories. One is type of item like dresses or pants or sweaters. And the second category is how dressy or casual the pieces are. Moving on to tip number seven, which is to sort by color. You can argue with me all you want, but I refuse to believe that there is any way to sort your clothes in your closet that is going to look more put together and more visually pleasing than a rainbow. And if you have that classic capsule wardrobe style where you only wear neutrals, you only wear black and white and gray and maybe a little bit of tan, then maybe you don't have to organize your closet that way. But for those of us who wear the full spectrum, organizing by color is really going to look the most put together. And it's also going to be the easiest way to find the piece you're looking for super quickly. I like to start with black, then go to dark blue, go through all the colors until I get to tans and white. And then if I have another category starting in the same basket or on the same reel, I'll start with white with the next category and then continue through to black so that we have a nice gradient and there's no jarring black all the way through to white and then starting with black again. That's just a personal preference, but I definitely find organizing everything by color makes me much more efficient at finding what I need and is just very visually pleasing. Tip number eight is to declutter often. I know you already know this, but if you have a tiny closet, you're going to have to get comfortable with the idea of letting go. And it's very hard. I get it. I struggle so much with decluttering. I get very sentimental about items, especially items of clothing that I have so many memories with. If it doesn't fit, you don't reach for it for an entire season. It's worn out or you just don't really like it anymore. It's time to get it out of your house. Moving on to tip number nine. Nine, which is to shop less, the other half of the declutter struggle. Get rid of your excess and don't bring more excess in. There are so many tips out there for shopping less, but I know for me, the thing that has worked the best is having a wish list, writing down the items I want, and then stepping back moving away, closing the tab, and just giving myself at least a week before I allow myself to go back. If I still really want it in a week, then I'll come up here and compare the clothes I have in my cart to the clothes I already have in my closet. Do I really need another green sweater? Probably not. <laughs> Do I really need another pair of gray sweatpants? I would like to say yes, but the answer is probably no. Those are the two things that help me the most to shop less, but you're just going to have to find what works for you. And now we've made it to our final tip, tip number 10, which is to swap out your closet, seasonally or bi-seasonally so it won't be so overloaded. That's what the second half of this video is going to be. I'm going to walk you through my five-step process for swapping out my closet bi-seasonally. When I say bi-seasonally, I mean that I lump together the colder months, so autumn and winter, and the warmer months, spring and summer. But you can also do it four times a year if you find that your wardrobe changes significantly between seasons. Keep your off-season items accessible, but slightly less so. I love a bin under the bed for that. Doing this makes makes my closet so much less overwhelming. It's not nearly so stuffed full and it just makes sense. I don't need to have access to little mini dresses and shorts in the dead of winter and I don't need my warmest fluffiest sweaters when it's the middle of August. Now that we've gone through all of my 10 tips, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. If you have more tips for staying organized in a tiny closet, leave those in the comments down below. And now let's move in to the seasonal changeover of my closet. My five-step process for changing over my closet by seasonally is super simple. The first step is to empty everything out. And I mean, literally everything. Touch every single piece of clothing you own. Look at it, remember it exists, and put it aside if you didn't wear it all season long so you can try it on and make sure it still fits. This is also a great time to check for damage on your pieces. Did you stain them the last time you wore them? Did one of your cats climb you like a tree and rip it apart? <laughs> Take this as an opportunity to re-familiarize yourself with your entire wardrobe and how each and every piece is holding up. 
Step number two, sort your wardrobe into piles. This is going to be happening concurrently to pulling the pieces out of your closet. Each piece you pull out has to go in one of a few piles. How many piles you use is gonna be up to you, but I'll share my pile system. Pile one is try on for any of the pieces I didn't actually wear in the last season, so I can make sure it still fits. Pile two is scraps. This is for pieces that are too damaged to keep wearing, but still have some value for the fabric alone. Maybe I can do some sort of an alteration or fix, or maybe I can just repurpose purpose the fabric for something else, like rags. Pile number three is trash. I always hope that this pile is empty or very close to it. I hate throwing clothes in the garbage, but sometimes they're just too damaged to be of any other use. Pile four is the donate pile. This is for any pieces that as you're holding them, you just think to yourself, I don't really like this anymore. I don't really want to keep it, but it's still in good enough condition that someone else could enjoy it. That's your donate pile. It's also the place that all the pieces in the try on pile are going to end up if they don't fit you anymore and they don't fit you enough that alterations aren't really going to make a difference. Pile number five is for all season pieces. This is for any of the pieces you're pulling out that you're going to wear all year long. And the last pile, pile number six, is seasonal. This is for any of the pieces you pull out of your closet that aren't really appropriate for the next season. Like I said, your piles might be different for you depending on your situation, but I feel like these six piles cover all of the bases. Moving on to step three of this process, which is repeating everything all over again with the clothes that you've had in storage. So pulling out that under the bed bin of spring and summer clothing and touching each piece and sorting them into piles. Just to make sure that nothing fell through the cracks when I was putting them away, that there's nothing that I right away realize that I can donate, that I'm not feeling keeping in my wardrobe anymore or something that I didn't realize had a big stain on the front that maybe should be put in a scrap pile. This process typically goes way faster than step one and two because again, ideally you did this process as you were storing your clothes away at the end of the last season and it's just a quick reminder of what pieces you have. Moving on to step four, which is packing away your off-season clothing. Now that you have an empty under the bed bin, you can grab all of your off-season clothes and put them away till next year. I try my best as I'm making my piles to keep folded items folded unless I'm trying them on so that I don't have to refold them to put them away. Everything is nice and organized, which means that when autumn comes around and I pull this bin back out, I don't have to refold any of the pieces that I'm not trying on. Makes the whole process much faster. And the final step of this process, step number five, is to repopulate your wardrobe with the new season's clothes. So putting back in anything that you determine to be all season clothes clothing that you want to keep in your closet all year round, and then adding in all your new pieces for the next season or seasons. This is the fun part, getting to see your wardrobe come together for the new season. It feels like you're getting a new wardrobe. You get to look at new pieces that you might have forgotten you had. It gives all that dopamine that you might normally get from shopping without having to spend a dime. I highly recommend as you're doing step five that you really think about where you're putting things instead of just putting things away on autopilot. While it may make sense for all your categories to stay the same no matter what season you're in, you might find that you want to move things around a little bit because the pieces you're storing are going to be different depending on the season. So stay open-minded, stay flexible, let yourself play around and try things in different places. And of course, it doesn't have to be set in stone. If you repopulate your wardrobe and realize in a couple weeks that something isn't quite working, you can always move it. You make the rules. And that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope it was helpful and gave you lots of ideas for dealing with a small closet and maybe inspired you to do a declutter and refresh for the new season. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other tips for managing a small closet that I didn't mention so that all of us can benefit from your experience and leave some sort of clothing related emoji in the comments if you made it all the way to the end, so I know you're a real one. I really appreciate every single person who watches all the way to the end. Give this video a like if it was helpful and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support. I appreciate all of you more than you know. And thank you, of course, to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box to get your own timeless, earth-friendly, and affordable pieces. And use my code ElizabethT20 for 20% off. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.